got a power outage. Let, let, let me hit back on record. I don't know where y'all lost me at, but we just, I just talked with my team. We actually had a power outage happen right here. <laughs> and I was just like, of all times for a power outage to happen. Exactly. That's technology. That's technology. <laughs> so, yeah. so hopefully you had answered the question while I was gone. But if not, you know, uh, you, <laughs> feel free to continue. <laughs> I, I, I think I did. So we were talking about the, uh, the importance of sustainability to a client who could not care less about sustainability and doesn't mm -hmm. want to incur the extra costs, you know, and spent expenses and so forth. Um, and I think I hit both of those on the so. OK, yeah. I, we're, we're good on. I would just add into that. Uh, I found, you know, especially on the architectural side, once you start to incorporate that into your project, you're often you'll often find in terms of cost is not that much more or you may find some aspects where it's even less than other materials Absolutely. that you were to specify. So it's not always a cost issue. Now, in terms of the client and educating the client, like you said, that could be a political discussion there. So you know your client. So you know if you need to get into that or not. But educating them and showing them how they can have more of a benefit with their project if they were to head that route that may be how you want to approach that conversation as opposed to getting into the politics of it because i as as yeah. you know there there are three things i was taught not to talk about when i'm on an <laughs> international trip as uh politics sports and religion so i <laughs> okay so yeah yeah well so that happens let me so, throw let me throw in a, another one i um <laughs> My mom used to sneak, and this is where I got the idea for the, uh, you know, sneak sustainability into design. And that is uh, my mom used to sneak nutritious things into her cooking uh, of goodies and treats. One time uh, we had peanut butter cookies okay. with bean sprouts in them. Okay. It it's really was as bad as it sounds because... They kind of <laughs> sprung out of the cookie and you'd see these little green things sticking out of a nice peanut butter cookie. It was like, oh, that's weird. Mm -hmm. But that was that was a bad example. But there were some really good ones where, you know, she made very nutritious things that were really tasty. Um, and I'm like, hey, mom, what would you sneak into it this time? But that's the mentality. Sometimes we have to take with clients is to just sneak it in there and mm -hmm. and find um, there are sources, this is more relevant to the interior design world as a whole, but there are sources for textiles that are highly uh, sustainable. They are, they're made with uh, you know, natural fibers and so forth that are extremely durable. I mean, there's some really cool hemp things coming out now that um, are durable. They're, they make a fake, fake leather. They make uh, beautiful things that are almost woolen-like and very durable that are out of sustainable products. So you can sneak them in in that, in that sense, but you have to open your thinking and your, your eyes and ears to the possibilities that are out there and start just, uh, you know, looking for those things to mm -hmm. find sources for such products. So right. it doesn't, it's not all about reuse. Of course, I'm kind of beholden to reuse because that's what we do, but there are all kinds of amazing products out there now that uh, are available for that. So um, sneaking them in is a good way. And then, and then, like I said, then you can tell your client after it's done, it's like, Psst, Hey, Jason, you know, <laughs> you know, man, you can tell people now that you're green because X, Y, Z, right. And you're like, well, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. They may not care. Some people just don't give a rip and that's okay. But, uh, you know, you're doing a good thing. And for those that do care, that's a great thing. Cause then they're going to want to want to know more and they're going to want resources from you and, and uh, expertise from you to be able to deliver on that. So that's true. anyway, what do you got okay. next? Yeah. So, so the next question we had from, uh, a member of our audience is how do you measure progress when clients feel that they're just a small piece of the puzzle and their remodel project will not, does not matter in the overall scheme of the environment and sustainability. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> that question feels like 
my vote doesn't count. <laughs> when, when I read that one, that, that, that was the same thing I was thinking like, well, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's, but that's a real, that's a real feeling. It's like, yeah. you know, I'm just a grain of sand on the and, beach. And, then too, what what happens when you hear on TV and they talk about how huge the issue is and how we have to hurry up now before it'll start or we're just not going to be. It's like that negative talk. Also, it's it begins to creep in like, well, will this small project and will my living room or my bathroom or kitchen, will it really matter? So. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it, yes, it will, because each vote does count. Mm -hmm. uh, one life saved counts. Um Mother Teresa said something. She said, never worry about numbers. Help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest you. Mm -hmm. So that spoke of people thinking like, well, I, I can't help a million. I can't help a million refugees. Help one. Mm -hmm. And when you and a million other people or just a hundred thousand other people help one, that hundred thousand is 10% of a million and that's a good thing. And then if you take a step more and somebody does a little more, it grows. And, and every time that you do something um, in the sustainability path, you, you'll talk about it. Others will hear it yeah. and they'll say, wow, Jason, you, you serious? That thing's used, that mm -hmm. thing's old, that thing's vintage. Where did you get something that, that that's so beautiful? Where did I've never seen anything like that. Or, or where's that flooring from? It's what? Yeah. It's long leaf pine from a, you know, a Southern, you know, home that was taken out of their barn and it's like an inch and a half thick and it's just gorgeous stuff. And, you know, they just don't have that anymore and they don't. So, you know, just that energy from incorporating it into a project, it's, you're going to hear about it. You're going to talk about it more. And, you know, then you're a role model. Others will think, huh, maybe I could do that. Yep. Where did you get that stuff from? Mm -hmm. Things like that. It, it matters. It's not that big a deal. And, and you're going to feel better about it and you're going to do it again. Okay. So it's not just the one project. You're going to feel better about it. You got a little in, in momentum in that positive direction. It, it, it matters. So, and others notice. Mm -hmm. It's a snowball effect. It's like you said, effect. it's yep. like, like you said, cause we've done projects where the, once it was over and then they started to talk to their neighbors about it. They started to talk to their community. They wanted to start to ask about where did you get that material? How did you apply that? And then they yep. used it in their project. So your small little project that you view is small can snowball into something huge. And it's, it's just all about doing your part. Yep. I agree hundred percent. Agree hundred percent. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Next one we had was uh, how do you educate and engage our employees? So this was from one of the, uh, the designers that wants to have it in his shop, but not sure how to engage and educate his, his employees that are not as passionate about sustainability. Again, like, like Jason, you said, mm -hmm. um, you know, your, your team, you know, your employees, um, yeah. you may not know some of these, let's say inner passions of them, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> they may simply be following, following your lead. And if your lead is, uh, say all new and we're not uh, currently focused on sustainability, then they're they may just be going along with that, but they may be quietly on the outside, be more concerned about such things. And they may be doing things in their life outside that are. So I would say kind of like, you know, talking to your clients, talk to your, your team, find out what their impressions of, you know, their feelings are about it. And, and take the <laughs> person that has the greatest fire in the belly about it and, uh, and, <laughs> and have them, um, start something there mm -hmm. and, and with your support, it's got to be with your support. Um, again, slow, slowly, but concretely. Um, I've got a great video and I could just drop it in the chat from okay. a friend. For all of those that are on the recording, I'll, I'll have this on the link. So you'll okay. be able to see okay. it as well. I'll, yeah, I'll just drop it on a, in the chat. 
Um, this is an architect in New York City. His name is Walter Kane, and he did a, uh, a project with a, a single um, tenant improvement in an apartment building. And the, uh, the place had been, I think it was like 3,000 square feet. It's an apartment. It had been remodeled, you know, 30 years prior, 25 years, something like that. They, gut, they gutted it because everything was just, okay. it, that, that's what they do, right? And, uh, but he said, let's take all the materials and pile them up inside. So don't throw them out the window through that, you know, yellow chute on the outside of the building or in, by, you know, in trash can by trash can. So you right. don't really get the sense of how much there is. Mm -hmm. Let's pile it all up neatly inside. So all the lumber they put in this thing, like they were going to start this big fire, right? You know, they piled it in this huge, and I was like, wow, there's a lot. The uh, drywall chunks, pieces, big pile of that, the, the electrical conduit and so forth and the wires. Oh man, they had this, this snaky serpentine mound of huge amount of wires, right? Like where was all that? <laughs> and, and this is in this video and they made an art exhibit and they opened it to the public just so you could experience one apartment in New York city and the volume of what goes to the landfill, what goes to the dump um, and just feel it. Because mm -hmm. you need that gut feeling. So I'd say, hey, take a field trip or just watch a video and, and see what, what, they, what they know, what they feel already, and what a little inspiration might lead to. Because um, you, you got to feel it in your gut. And if you don't have the experience, then get the experience. Uh, I've had people, I know people who have gone to a landfill just to see what it looks like. These, these places are massive and there's 500 and some across the U S and they're huge. Just get a gut feeling somehow to inspire the start of educating your employees. That's what I'd, I'd say, get them, give them a jolt. <laughs> <laughs> I like and and it all and it all starts at the top. It all starts at the top. If, yeah. If, if you're passionate about, because there is a lot of things that my people do not are not really passionate about. Because I there there are certain things that I I have our team do, but when I show the passion, they oftentimes it rubs off. And I've heard oftentimes like you know I already didn't like X Y Z, but you were so passionate about it. I started to like it. I started to yeah, exactly. learn more, get into it. And then, you know, I, it, it, it rubbed off on me. So if you're as the, as the owner or as the, as the um, individual on top, if you're the leader and you're passionate about it, educate your team, show it, let them see why you're so passionate about it. And it may eventually rub off to your team. You know, you just never know. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. yep. And and find out, uh, I'd say, like I said before, sustainability is a broad, su broad subject. Mm -hmm. Take it apart and look at the individual components of sustainability. And if it's the, uh, say it's the community aspect you want to uh, enhance, the, the benefits to your, your community, the benefits to underserved and so forth. Well, um, deconstruction is a burgeoning industry, taking buildings apart rather than demolishing them and landing them in the heap and sending them to the dump. Deconstruction disassembles them systematically and takes the components and the elements and actually puts them into reuse and recycling. Mm -hmm. But it does another thing. It creates jobs. Yep. Lots of jobs, good paying jobs, construction jobs that that pay well and, and so forth. And so that's a good thing for a community. Plus it, it, it brings the materials back, uh, ideally first into the community. And if, if not the, if they can't, um, use them there by virtue of demand in the community, well, then you sell them and get them out to other places, but the money's in the community. So it has a, a, a very positive effect. So there's yeah. that. I like it. I like it. One is about uh, the environmental organizations or, or sustainability organizations that they may be able to use with or partner with. And that's one of the reasons I want to have you here is because we have actually partnered with you. And what are ways exactly. that they can use 
your companies or companies like yours to add more sustainability into their projects and incorporate that in? Ah, okay. I, I see. Thank you. Um, so recapture it is a, a resource for builders and designers and homeowners that want to incorporate used materials for whatever reason, for the sustainability reason, for the, the price reason. Cause you know, when lumber skyrocketed a year ago and a sheet of plywood went from like, you know, $18 way back when to $80, $90 a sheet. And and a two by four was like 16 bucks in home Depot for a Mm -hmm. stud. Like, wow. Okay. Well, you could buy used lumber in a in a salvage store for like half that. And so a lot of salvage stores had banner years in 2021 because of that. They got to take advantage of that because they could sell stuff cheaper. So um, so recapture it's there to capture that uh, that flow and to amplify it, to enhance it, to uh, create a, a larger flow of materials from a variety of sources. So we can, in our system, you can actually buy from, you know, multiple locations in one transaction. So that's new to the, uh, to this ecosystem. Um, What that does is that allows bigger projects to utilize the materials where formerly, you know, you had to go to a, a, a warehouse store that's you know dusty and full and go door by door and window by window or look through the boards and and that well that's kind of slow um, or you could shop facebook marketplace and and arrange a deal and then go meet at somebody's house or a 7-eleven parking lot or wherever you do the transaction or whatever um so there's that so um so that's what we're here to do is to amplify the flow of of use building materials into new construction. Um, but we're not the only ones. Um, <clears throat> there are local, um, more localized uh, bartering and brokering marketplaces in some cities. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a lot, but in some. Uh, there are organizations like the Good Future Design Alliance, which is designers and architects with a focus on sustainability and toward the circular economy of building materials and all the things, including even things like packaging of materials and bringing that into the circular economy of things. And, and circular is another term, term that uh, kind of gets tossed around there and has kind of gotten broad and diffuse, but it just means that something you know, has a life cycle that once it's through one life, it finds another Mm -hmm. and another and another and keeps going. So um, there's uh, the Good Future Design Alliance. Um, There's the Designers Collaborative, which is Mm -hmm. another interior design organization on the East Coast. And they've got about 400 member firms in that. And they are building like, like KABMS and Jason are doing now. They're building their sustainability focus. So uh, they've partnered with us too. Um, LinkedIn has some amazing groups on it. There's one called Sustainability Professionals. And that is, I think, 300,000 or maybe 800,000. Anyway, it's a lot of, it's lot a lot of, of people. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. You know, so yeah, there's a, a incredible resource in that community. Um, the uh, Ellen MacArthur Foundation is sort of the global, mm, I don't know, the spear point of the circular economy in a global sense. They're, I believe they're in London. Um, it, big organization, uh, really global impact. And they're all about the, the circular economy of, of just about everything. So that includes building materials and, and design and so forth. Um, and then a, a more local one in the U.S. is uh, it's called Build Reuse. And that's an organization which is comprised mostly of, um, of the people who reuse building materials and architectural salvage and the deconstruction world. So it's that, that portion of that uh, chain of processes from the deconstruction of buildings to um, who receives those materials and sells them to a wider audience. So there are those. Is that- I like, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a actually have you also talk about 
brick. That that's one of oh. <laughs> that's one of the resources that you're about to come out with. Yep. And this is one of the things we've talked about over the last few weeks that because we're big on education. And one of the reasons we have decided to partner with you and your organizations is because it's not just about what what you have to offer to others, but is how you can serve and the value you can provide to other design professionals. So if you could just talk a little bit about the brick. Wow. Well, that was a, a generous plug. <laughs> I love this guy. So uh, the brick, the brick is our resource center on recapture it. It's about to launch. Uh, it is actually built and it's about to launch in December. And it, the BRIC, B-R-I-C-K, stands for Building Resources for Inspiration, Community, and Knowledge. So for the I part, the inspiration, think of like Pinterest and Instagram. Lots of pictures, lots of graphics, lots of stuff to inspire you to think, how can I, re, how can I use reuse? Um, what would I do with all these old boards? What would I do? How would I, you know, um, imagine something like this on the facade of a building or on the walls of a of an interior? And there are amazing, amazing examples of things that you would not know are reuse, but incorporate all used materials in built in large building facades, um, structural things. Uh, timber, um, even things that would seem kind of modernist because um, we've got like um, Italian tiles. Well, Italian tile is kind of timeless, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. can go into a modernist uh, look as well as a, as a, 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 a more, uh, a, a, a less modern <laughs> appearance. Um, so, Anyway, the, uh, the inspiration part, then the community. The community, we're, we are uh, relying on our uh, social media at the moment until we get that built out further, but it will be more interactive in, in, uh, in the future. Uh, and then the knowledge is really about sharing resources. There will be websites, white papers, uh, articles, people, consultants, um, things that we know from all over the world that... Uh, are all about sustainability and it'll be broader than just building materials. Um, but uh, it will include things like, well, there's a company in uh, New Zealand. New Zealand's a hot spot for sustainability. And they have this machine that somebody developed to build the a replacement for the cinder block out of any kind of waste plastic. And that's pretty cool. There's a, there's one in Israel that's making a, a, a another, a, plastic uh, pellets that can be made into anything and can be recycled in infinitely, which is pretty cool too. Um, there's, there's things all over the world. There's a, a, there's a new company out that we just helped launch uh, in October. Um, actually, we didn't do much. We just got them in, a, uh, uh, in an arena that they could be uh, seen widely. And that is a company called Urban Machine. And Urban Machine is in the Bay Area, California. That is a machine that takes lumber out of an existing building and prepares it for immediate sale. Okay. It removes screws, bolts, staples, nails. And it will even, with, um, with time, it will actually um, grade the lumber as it comes out. Everything from the, you know, two by fours up to massive glue lamb beams. It'll do a truckload, literally a semi load of lumber in a day, processed, clean, without nails, without bolts, ready to go to be incorporated into new situations. So you're, you're saving uh, something from the dump. You are making it saleable immediately. And that's going to be a game changer. And I don't use that word very often, but that that's going to change this game. So awesome. And see that that's why, like I said, that's why we want to partner with you because our, our audience know we have a massive resource library and it's all about helping to educate uh, our audience yep. out there about marketing PR business development. So I often say that 
whether you work with us directly or not, we have information on the resource library that'll help you grow. Yep. And when I had talked to Larry months ago, that was one of the things where we had symbiotic relationship is that we're all about value and providing that to our constituents. And so that that's one of the reasons we had wanted to partner with you. Love having you here on the webinar. Uh, sorry we had that little uh, debacle where, you know, the power went out, but you seem to continue on. So I, <laughs> I, I love that aspect of it. But uh, if we have any last questions from the audience, we have a few people here. If we have any last questions, feel free to add them in. Or if not, we're going to close it up. I'll, while we're waiting to see if we have any questions, Larry, if anyone on our audience or anyone uh, that's listening to the recording want to reach out to you, how do they do so? Oh, let me um, put that in here. Good question. So I'm on LinkedIn for one place. I'm there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> As I know, Jason is too. Yes, yes. That's our main platform by far. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to put in my uh, email address too. Anyone that's watching on the recording will have this in, in the show notes or in the description of the video as well. Let's see if I spelled my name right. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's important. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, you never know. There you go. Okay, that's going out to everybody there. And recapture it is recapture it is uh, spelled R E C A P T U R I T dot com. So that's uh, where we are. You'll be you'll be able to find the brick there, um, and we have quite a lot of resources uh, available for sellers, buyers, and so forth, and of course products. So that's my little pitch, you know, my shameless pitch. But um, it's been a, it's been great hanging with you, Jason, here today, and uh, and. <laughs> Just about every week. I think we meet just about every week now yeah. and have a fun conversation and have a powwow just to talk about how, how we can help each other and we do. How, yep. how, how we can make an impact in the world. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. And you're doing that. And I was uh, enthused and inspired by what you guys have done with, at uh, KABMS with the uh, with your resource center and your marketing. And um, and then when you told me that you get so much um so much traffic to your resource center that just inspired me to get ours out there quicker. And I appreciate that so much because that's uh, useful information. Yes. And, yeah. and we love having you as a partner and we look forward to what we're going to help to build with the brick and other things together. So absolutely. Don't see any other questions. I see a couple people here said they want to thank you for your time. And I too want to thank you for your time, Larry. And uh, we have enjoyed having you here. Next month, we're going to talk about on the 28th of the month, we're going to talk about how to recession proof your marketing game plan and how to uh -huh. plan for 2023. So that's that's what we're going to be talking about heading into the next year. We've been hearing about the R word. Are we in it? Is it coming? Is it going to be next year? <laughs> but there are ways in your marketing that you can uh, help prepare and help to not have that have uh, issue on your business. So that's exactly. what we're going to talk about next month on the 28th. And we hope you all have enjoyed this time here. We hope to see you all here next month on our webinar of the month. All, all right. Thanks so much, Jason. Appreciate it, man. All right.